Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. Happy to see you. So today we're going to have a little talk about Drupal Commerce. First off, um, I presume you have some basic development knowledge as well as, as well as some basic commerce knowledge, by which I mean you know what orders are, order items, products. Otherwise, this session will be hard to follow, I think. Uh, also, I will be switching between my slides, some example code, and the live demo website I prepared. So, this can get interesting. Hello, I'm Robin. I'm a Drupal developer for um, already, I think, eight or nine years, and I'm currently employed at Entity One, which is a Belgian based Drupal company. We uh, provide Drupal solutions for medium to large co corporations, which also include e-commerce solutions. Um, I bring my crazy ID IDs uh, into life in uh, Drupal, mainly in Drupal. If you have any questions after the session or just want to talk, uh, give me a tap on the shoulder um, or contact me uh, via drupal.org or the uh, Drupal or Drupal BE Slack channels. All right, the session outline for today First, we're going to uh, tackle some basics about commerce. Then we're going to see some core plugins provided by Commerce Core. We're going to talk about order processors, price resolvers, price resolvers, and useful event subscribers. If there's any time left, I'll show you how to create custom workflows and transitions as well. First off, let me uh, show you the um, basic structure I prepared for the demo website. <laughs> So I prepared a demo website where you can buy dinosaurs. Is this visible for everyone? Readable? Okay. So uh, pretty basic, just a title, an image, uh, the SKU, the price, which are two fields uh, added by Commerce by default. And then I added two custom fields to indicate whether the dinosaur is a vegetarian and if the dinosaur can fly or not. So that is basically it. Um, all right, we're gonna start off by some, with some Drupal Commerce basics. So uh, as, all, as you all know, it's recommended to install uh, Commerce and Drupal with Composer because it has quite few uh, dependencies to contract modules and external libraries, which are almost all um, maintained by Commerce guys. So the internationalization library, addressing tax and zone library. Um, the dependent contrib is the address module, entity API, inline entity form, entity revisions and profile. Uh, and also it requires you to have at least Drupal Core 8.6. And as of version 2.15, currently Commerce is at version 2.14. This will be uh, Drupal Core 8.7. So keep that in mind. All right. It has uh, one required PHP extension you, sh you should install, and it's BC Mat. The price module, the commerce price module, requires you to install that um, PHP extension. For some external payment providers, you also need to install the PHP SOAP extension, but that's optional. For the people who use uh, Drupal VM, you can just install these packages by adding following lines to your config. YML file. For people who use Docker or Lando, I'm sure it's pretty much the same. All right, so Commerce um, has the core module, Commerce obviously, and is separated into separate uh, sub-modules. Each sub-module each sub has its own functionality um, and are dependent to each other. So for example, the uh, order module uh, is dependent to the Commerce price module and the store module. So most of the time, when you install Commerce, you will almost always install all of these modules except for the promotion module, if your website doesn't need promotions, or the tax module, if your website doesn't need any taxes. But I think for the most part, all of the other modules will be enabled. <clears throat> all right, so I try to map out, it's a little small, I'll, I'll zoom in, I'll try, I try to map out the structure of uh, commerce. You'll see there are a lot of content entities, config entities, uh, plugins, workflows, and it, this can be a little bit daunting at first. It can 
be quite complicated, but when you, when you figure this out, all these little separate pieces allow you to, as a developer, really easily to extend uh, commerce, and this makes commerce really, really pluggable. And that's why we're here today, to talk about the extendability of commerce. All right, first, plugins. So what are plugins? Basically, plugins are just classes which implement an, um, an interface and which have the same swappable functionality. The only special thing about a plugin is the class is also discovered by Drupal. So how can you define a plugin? You have to create a class with a specific namespace. You have to add an annotation to your class. And third, you have to extend the, your own plugin class with the base plugin with the base plugin class. So always three steps, creating a clause with a namespace, adding the annotation, and extending the correct class. class. All right. Commerce Core provides, I think, five or six, maybe seven um, plugins, which you can extend and create. The first one we're going we're gonna to see is the Commerce Condition. Uh, commerce Condition is used throughout Commerce uh, for now, it's only used in promotions and payment gateways where you can set conditions. For example, I only want to apply this promotion when the customer has role VIP or when the order has uh, a total value of, let's say, 100 US dollars. So these are the conditions. Same for the payment gateways. But most of the time, these conditions suffice. But if you need custom, um, uh, custom condition, you can achieve this by adding a commerce condition plugin. How can you do this? First step, you add a class with following namespace, so plugin commerce condition. You add an annotation to your class where you provide the ID, the label, the category of the um, condition, and the entity type on which the condition will apply. This can be a commerce order item or a commerce order. And last but not least, you implement your class with the evaluate methods where you evaluate true or false if the condition applies. So, in our dinosaur web shop, I've added a condition to check if a dinosaur is veggie. So, what I did was I created the correct folder structure, so source plugin commerce condition, like so, in the namespace. Added the commerce condition annotation, where uh, I'm giving it an ID, a, readable, a human readable name. I'm setting on category product, and I want to evaluate against a commerce order item entity. And then I just implemented the evaluate methods, where I'm checking if the entity is, an, is a commerce product variation, if it has a field field underscore veggie, and if so, return if the dino is veggie, yes or no. And this results in the following. So I'm going to show this in the promotion <laughs> UI. I enabled the promotion module. I already added a promotion, veggie is good. And you can see here my custom condition appears uh, along with the other commerce core, core conditions. So that's how you can add custom <coughs> conditions throughout commerce. Commerce cores commerce cores only uses this in promotions and payment gateways, but if some contract module also displays this form, it will also pick up your custom condition and you can select it from the UI. All right. The next plugin I want to show you is the promotion offer plugin. So if you add a promotion, you can um, choose three types of offers. You can um, uh, a percentage of, fixed amount of, or if you buy X, you get A. This will cover, I think, 95% or maybe 99% of the use cases, but it's still possible to add your own offer type through an offer plugin. Again, same, you just add a clause with the current namespace, this time promotion offer. You add the correct annotation, give it the ID, human readable name. And again, you want to uh, indicate uh, 
on what you're giving the promotion to. This can be a commercial order item or a commercial order. So if you um, choose for a commercial order item, the promotion will be applied against each commercial order item that evaluates against the conditions you configured. And then, last but not least, you um, implement the class. For our Dino workshop, um, I couldn't really think of a um, really good use case, so I cre created um, a random percentage of um, promotion where each time your page reloads, you get a random percentage off. Um, so the only thing I did was adding the correct namespace, adding my annotation, and then applying the promotion. How can I apply a promotion? This is the code where I'm uh, just determining um, how much uh, the promotion will be by giving a random percentage of between 5 and 15%. And then I'm adding an adjustment. So I'm adjusting the price of the order item. I'm adding an adjustment of the amount I calculated. And I multiply it with negative 1 so to make sure it gets subtracted from the um, total order price and not, um, is not added to the order price. Um, I'll get back to this in a, in a minute. So you can see here I'm using the promotion adjustment type. This is an adjustment type provided by Commerce Score because um, yeah, I'm adding an adjustment for a promotion, of course. This now, if you see in the um, back end, you can see your own offer type. So we're going to save this. So now I have a promotion which will apply a random percentage off if your um, dinosaur is a vegetarian. So let's test this. Um, this dinosaur is not a veg veg vegetarian, I'm sorry. I'm going to use veggie. Um, this one is, so I'm going to add two units to my cart. I'm going to my cart right now. And as you can see, I'm getting a 7% discount two times, which results in one euro 26 cents. If I update my cart because my percentage of is random, this should change to another percentage. All right. Our custom promotion offer works. So this is how you can apply conditions and promotions, custom promotions to uh, commerce. All right, next. Commerce checkout flow. So each order has to go through a flow to be completed. And commerce provides you with one checkout flow, which is the default checkout flow. And this checkout flow contains, I'll show you, um, five or six steps. I'll show you in a minute. But for some yeah, customers of yours, this isn't enough, or it's, it is too many. You can alter these steps by providing your own commerce checkout flow plugin. Again, same three steps, adding a clause with a namespace, annotation, and implementing your clause. Um, yeah, I'll just show it, show it in the code example first. Checkout flows. So by default, Commerce provides this default checkout flow with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six steps. All right, this is default. How can we add our own flow? Okay, we're adding uh, the annotation, just an idea and a human readable name. And what I did was I extend the multi-step default class, which is the default, uh, the, the commerce default, and I added an extra, an extra step to the beginning of the flow, um, the step Dino Wisdom. Um, if you then clear your cache, uh, I haven't pointed this out yet, every time you add a new plugin, you have to clear your cache for Drupal to pick it up. Um, you can add a new checkout flow of your type you just added. I already did this, so the Dino flow, you can see there's a, an extra step here before, again, Dino Wisdom. But it hasn't any paints yet. So we'll provide our own custom paint 
to display on this step. Each step can contain one or multiple panes, or even none, but then the step will be skipped. And again, the same steps. Adding a class with the commerce checkout pane annotation. Um, providing an ID, the default step you want to render the pane on, and the wrapper elements. This can be container or field sets, I think. Um, so I'm choosing for a container just to wrap it in a diff. Uh, then I'm determining when the pane should be visible. So uh, our pane will contain an image which can be configured, which I want to show on a pane. So if the image is not empty, uh, our um, pane will be visible. Um, and then I just render the pane, choo -choo -choo, like so. Uh, I'm just displaying the configured image. So again, if you clear your cache, this pane should should show up in your um, in your flow, and you can enable it, enable it, and click save. All right. So we already started an order a few minutes ago, and the checkout flow is determined on order create. So right now in the database. My current order, so uh, check out order <coughs> five, has already been tagged with the default checkout flow. You can see this because our first step in the Dino flow was uh, Dino Wisdom. How can I make sure my order picks up the new checkout flow? Is just by deleting my order. So I'll delete it, and then I'll have to do one more thing. On the order type, so there's only the default order type, which is added by commerce. I can configure the checkout flow. So my dyno flow shows up here. I'm going to save it. Going back to my product overview, I'm going to add one item to my cart, go into my cart, click checkout and Dino Wisdom. So this is how you can alter the commerce flow with custom steps and custom panes. Um, I've only overridden the get steps um, methods in my class, but there are a lot of I'll just click through, moves the default. So there are a lot of functions which you can override to make sure your flow behaves exactly like you want it. So I recommend not altering the default, so because you can also alter plugins. I recommend not altering the uh, default commercial plugin by just adding your own plugin and extending from whichever clause you want and adding your own functionality. All right, so at this point we have our custom promotion, our custom checkout flow with a checkout pane. Now we're going to add uh, a custom commerce tax type. So the tax module already has a lot of functional functionality out of the box. Uh, again, I think 75% 70, of the use cases are covered by commerce score. But if you have a, a difficult client which has a, um, complicated tax logics, you can add your own tax type plugin which implements those very, very complicated uh, rules. So again, we do this by adding a, ta a commerce tax, ta tax type plugin and applying the tax. So again, adding a tax is adjusting the order price. We have to do this through an order adjust, through an adjustment, and I'm choosing to do this on the order item. So for each order item, I'm determining the tax, and I'm going to add an adjustment so it gets added to the order total. Um, pretty simple here. I'm just adding an, um, a VAT of 21%. Next, in your configuration of your store, go to tax types. Then you can add a new tax type and your Dino VAT, 
or your text type, but my Dino VAT text type will show up right here. I already added it, uh, but it's disabled, so I'm going to enable it. So they are, there are no configuration options here on my text type because it's always 21%. I'm going to my cards again. I'm going to refresh my cards by updating the quantity and the VAT should show up. All right, we have our custom VAT right here, which is quite simple right now, but you can go yeah, crazy in here. Um, and last but not least, maybe the most important one, and the most difficult one to get right um, is the payment gateway plugin. Um, there are already a lot of contract modules who provide payment gateways, for example, PayPal or um, Stripe or some or another payment provider. But um, sometimes clients have their own payment um, implementation, so then you have to provide a custom payment gateway. There are two types of payment gateways on-site payment gateway which where you don't get redirected to an external payment provider and off-site payment gateway where you get redirected to an external payment provider and get redirected back to the website after you completed or cancelled the payment. Uh, again to add it is quite simple we just add a payment gateway um, annotation add an ID and human readable name. The modes are, um, for example, if you install the PayPal payment gateway, there are two modes, sandbox and life, so you can configure the different uh, options on your staging environment and your life environment. Um, I don't need these modes right here. Uh, you can add, you can define forms where you can add a payment manually or receive a payment manually, and then you set the payment type. So I chose payment manual right here, and I just extend, just for the sake of the demo, the uh, manual payment provider, and yeah, all else is the same. So I don't have any um, actual functionality in my class. So if we're on the first step of our checkouts, no, sorry, second step. So here the payment information. Currently, you cannot choose between payment providers because there's only one enabled, and that's a default commercial one. So we're going to enable our custom payment gate. I'm sorry. <coughs> our custom payment gateway. So if you edit your annotation, you can add a new payment gateway of plugin type dyno check. So I provided a dyno check. Uh, I already added it, but it's disabled. I'm just going to enable it right now. I added the payment instructions RAR. This uh, message, so if you configure the payment instructions, this will show up on the order completed, on the checkout completed step. So you can configure this here. And depending on the payment gateway or the payment type you chose, you can configure other um, payment instructions. So I'm going to enable this. And then refresh and then you should yeah okay we can choose the manual payments now or the pay by dyno check um, this is pretty basic right now but if you have like an off-site um, payment provider sorry plugin you'll have to um, implement three methods on notify well, Notify is the method that will be called when the um, external payment provider lets your website know, hey, this payment was successful or this payment was not successful. And then you can do whatever you want, um, change the state of the order, change the state of the payments. So that's the notification callback. The on return callback is the callback that gets executed when you get redirected back to the website after you paid the, um, the order. Um, and the on cancel is the uh, callback when you get redirected back to the website when the user, for some reason, cancel the payment. So you'll at least have to implement these three uh, methods. All right, that's it. No, of course not. There are still other plugin types. Uh, the ones the ones I showed you will be the ones that, that you use most, I think. But uh, there's also entity threads where you can alter um, entity types defined by commerce score. 
uh, inline form, which is like an equivalent for inline entity form during checkouts, but a lot less code than inline entity form. Uh, then the payment type plugin to um, provide extra payment types, and the same for payment methods to provide extra payment methods. So this can all be extended by plugins. All right, then order processors. Order processors, what are, what are order processors? Those are special services defined by commerce, and they allow you to manipulate prices on an order or order item level, and it is achieved through price adjustments like we've seen earlier. Um, this is some code from Commerce Core, where commerce tries to find all order processors. You can see that commerce looks through all services which are tagged with commerce order dot order processor and which have an attribute adjustment type. So if those, those two um, requirements are fulfilled, commerce will, will pick this up as an order processor. I'll show you in a minute how you can uh, define this in your services.yml file. So first off, um, for my demo, I created a custom adjustment type to add shipping costs. So I added an adjustment type shipping. How can I do this? Just by adding a YML file to my, uh, with the following name convention to my module and adding following code to it, a label, a singular label, a plural, plural label, uh, if it has to be displayed in UI, yes or no, and you wait. And then your custom adjustment type is defined. Next step, oh, this is the price adjustment UI. If you chose has UI to be true. Uh, next step is this, defining your service in your services.yml file and tagging it with commerce order .order processor and adding the adjustment type you just defined above, which is in this case custom adjustment. And then last but not least, implementing your processor. So I'm going to switch to an actual example now. So I want to add shipping costs to my Dino web shop. How can I do this? So I added a custom adjustment type, Dino shipping, like so in my YML file. Next, I add an extra service, my order processor. I tagged it with order processor and my adjustment type, Dino shipping. So now we're all set to um, create the order processor class which is located here. I'm going to remove the return statement. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm checking if the dyno, what do you do? if the dyno can fly, whether he can fly or not. So if the dyno can fly, there are no shipping costs because it can fly to its own destination. If it can fly, you have to uh, pay shipping costs, obviously. Uh, I'm doing this by adding the adjustments of type dyno shipping to each order item which um, has to have shippings, shipping costs. Uh, the shipping costs are really low, 2 euros, and um, are multiplied by the order item quantity. So I'll show this in my checkout, in my cart. Uh, I don't think, all right, we don't have any flying dinosaurs, so if we update the quantity right here, we should have six euros um, of shipping costs. All right, shipping costs six euros. We're going to add a flying dinosaur to, and the shipping costs should still be six euros because this dinosaur can fly to its own destination. So. This is how you can add custom adjustment types, custom adjustments to your order to manipulate the price after you have added orders, uh, products to your um, cart. All right. Next. All right. Next are price resolvers. Um, what are price resolvers? Price resolvers. Uh, a resolver is, an, is a service that provides an answer to a potentially complex question. So, uh, for example, commerce, what is the price of this product? Which store should I use? Or what tax rate should I apply? 
these can be, but also cannot be, but these can be really complicated questions, and these are um, handled by resolvers. The most common resolver which, will, which you will use, I suppose, is the price resolver, and this allows you to offer different prices for the same product based on conditions. For example, if you order more than 50 um, items, you get a discount, or VIP users get a permanent 10% discount. So this uh, allows you to use different uh, order item prices for the same products. So if you implement price resolvers, price resolvers always think some of the conditions can all also be achieved through the commercial promotion module. For example, a VIP role, users have a permanent 10% discount. You can just add a promotion with a condition. If the user has role VIP, add a 10% discount. So it's not always custom code. It can be achieved through the promotion module also. All right. So what about order processor? Because an order processor all also um, yeah, adjusts the price. The difference is, the big difference is that an order processor is always executed in the context of an order of an order item. Price resolvers can um, exist out of the context of an order. So for example, um, if you have a um, product detail page, you can show to a VIP user the price of the product with a 10% discount and to a normal user the normal price and at that point, the order isn't even created yet. So um, that's where you should be using price resolvers outside of the context of an order and use order processors to um, alter the prices within the context of the order. All right, how can we use uh, a custom price resolver? Actually the same as the order preprocessor, just tag it with price resolver, uh, just, so add in service and tag it with price resolver and then implement your class um, and implement the resolve methods. So for us, what I did um, was the following. I added the price resolver to my services.yml and tagged it with price resolver and just implemented it like so. Um, let's remove the return statement right here. Okay. So uh, if you order a quantity between one and 50, just use the default price. If you order 50 between 250, get a 10% discount, and over 250, get a 15% discount. Um, and else something funky is going on, just use the default price. We're going to check this in our cart. So I'm going to remove this item and add So here we see the unit price of 8.99. So if I change this to 51, we get a 10% discount. So this should be like around 8.1, I think. I hope. Yeah. All right. So this is our price price resolver, our custom price resolver kicking in and overriding the default order item unit price by the unit price we define right here. So actually price resolvers sets the unit price, order adjustments then later on adjusts the order total price. That's the big difference. All right. So um, I think the, the last, because I don't think I ha I'll have time enough to explain the workflows and the transi transitions, but you can always, always come up to me and ask as after the session, I'll be happy to, uh, to explain. So um, the last is our event subscribers. So what are event subscribers? They allow different components to interact with each other, uh, where one component dispatches an event and another component can listen to an event. So for example, let's say, Commerce dispatches an event when the order when the cart gets emptied, and your custom code can then listen to that event. Oh, the cart gets emptied. I want to do some custom stuff, maybe so show a custom message or something like that. So those are event subscribers, which also always exists out of one party dispatcher, the other part the listener. 
So these uh, replace uh, partially hooks, the old outdated Drupal 7 hooks. Uh, I don't think the only hooks um, Commerce has are the um, entity hooks, which are provided by Drupal Core. Uh, all the other hooks are now implemented by event subscribers, which is a good thing. So a few useful Commerce events are, I'm going to show you the order item comparison fields event, uh, but there are other useful events also. Like I said, if you empty a cart, if you uh, add something or update your cart, if you assign an order to a user, um, and so on and so on. So um, how can you, I'll show you in a minute how you can um, interact with this event, and I'll explain what this event is. But how can you uh, use an event subscriber? Again, just um, add a, an entry to your services JAML file and tag it with event subscriber, and then implement your event subscriber. Basically, it's always the same, just adding a clause and then implementing your clause. All right, our event subscriber. So I've uh, added, I implemented the require methods get subscribed events and there I'm saying hey I want to listen to the events on order item comparison fields. What is this event? So commerce score by default if you add something to your cart so right now we have 51 dinos. Uh, I'm going to add another one add to cart. You'll see this just goes up to 52. It's not a new order item because Commerce order checks, oh, if it's the same product, I'll just add one to the, uh, to the quantity and not add a new order item. You can alter this behavior by adding uh, fields which on Commerce you check on uh, to determine if the product added is the same or not. So right now, I'm saying, hey, I want you to check on the field delivery also to check if the uh, item added is the same or not which results in uh, I'll just add something to my view to add an extra field on my order item type. I'm going to alter the add to cart form and I'm going to show the delivery field. So when I'm, we add an item to our cart, now we can select the delivery option. So I'm going back to my so here, this is the delivery. We have already something in our cart with delivery tomorrow. I'm going to add, yeah, I want this dinosaur to be delivered today. I'm going to add it to the cart, and it should result in a new order item line. So this is how you can manipulate the uh, combining of order line items by using that event. All right. I suppose I have two minutes left, I think, so uh, I'll skip this one. But again, if you uh, want any um, elaboration on this subject, come to me after the session and I'll explain. Um, quick then, um, commerce contrib, which I use which I use lots, is commerce combined cards uh, to combine cards, not other line items, but cards, because in some rare si situations, users can have multiple cards, which yeah, is weird behavior but it's not fixed by commerce score, it's fixed by uh, combined cards. Then commerce shipping is the shipping module and the commerce currency resolver if you have multiple currencies on your uh, web shop. Okay, uh, also join us for uh, contribution, op contribution opportunities on Thursday and thanks for your attention, leave some feedback. Are there any questions? Any questions?
you should have the plugin for the price uh, payment gateway. No, for the price um, price resolver. Price resolver. Is it also possible to add somewhere uh, a message or, or like we we change the price because now it was not visible that you changed the price. It just mag magically happened to the price. Um, it it is possible. Um, by implementing an event subscriber, uh, I'll show you. So the subscriber, if you subscribe to the event cart entity update, so when in something in your cart changes, if you subscribe to that event, you can yeah, write some logic. If the quantity changes, which results in a price change, then you can show a mes message. Yeah, exactly, but the message then disappears, so then it's, uh, it's invisible again. Yeah, what you could do is uh, create a custom price formatter, which like shows the original price straight through, and then the uh, discounted price. That's what you could do. Okay. Okay. Thank you.